statement one. If you all, um, if you're all done. Um, sport promotes health and well-being. Ivor and Simon. <laughs> children and youth too, but uh, also it uh, is an uh, integral strategy of uh, stemming childhood obesity, like uh, it helps the kids in young age to develop in their self. And prevent health problems yeah. and obesity, okay? And uh, helps um, improve to not get uh, different diseases and sickness. Yeah. Uh, same as uh, pain in ligaments and stuff like that in older age. That's your evidence to yeah, su support like, the statement. That's a pro. Yeah. Um, <coughs> sport can also be unhealthy if it gets uh, too extreme. Too extreme? Yeah. Um, if you push your body to the Example can be professional athletes who decides to use drugs to get better results. Uh, yeah. Good. Do you have any examples of um, situations? Heart attack. Heart attacks? Yes. Yeah. Previously, a very, very sad case yeah. in Olsen. That might not have been about sports, I don't know. But. Uh, it's probably the same thing as uh, Alexander. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are two sides to the story. That's the, mm. the end of it. Okay, next group. Yeah. Um, uh, two points to make on the symptoms of the pros. Um, first, of course, there's loads of stories in the media about, uh, let's say, poor kids who has been trained to do football and then they got really good and got into teams and such. Um, loads of those stories. The uh, negative side to that is that, of course, you can't put all the poor people or people who has a hard start and put them on a football team. You have to, have to actually be good and everyone isn't that good to actually get paid for it and then be able to get themselves out of the, out of the, the gutter, so to say. Um, so you could say that there's a that you can give them a chance to get good at something, but there's far from there's there's only a certain percent that will actually be able to earn money from it or get somewhere other than just playing football. The other kids, um, there's another pro that several programs, of course, sport is a very important factor in a lot of programs who tries to get uh, uh, teens out of crime. So. Uh, where they try, for example, in, in Brazil, you have programs that uh, help kids learn how to uh, uh, talk, pronunciate uh, school in sports to help them get jobs when they can't go get the education. Because I know in Brazil, especially uh, education, uh, the quality of the education is very low if you can't really afford it. Mm. So you have to pay up lots of money to get a good education. So. Um, the pros would be that you, sport is, sport can be used to get you out of the gutter, but um, how much and how, how much we can do is very much up to them. And sometimes it's very much, um, there's not a lot of people who get very, very far, but, you, but sport does absolutely give you an attitude and it can be used as a tool to learn skills that you can use to get a job or to, start something up for yourself. Yes, helps. Good. We're going to talk about that later too. So it's good that you brought it up. I think um, yeah, yesterday <coughs> I actually, I have this film at home, so I watched it uh, because I was preparing for this lecture. Uh, it's called Soka Africa. It's a, it's a documentary about two African players uh, from um, one from South Africa and the other one from Cameroon. 
uh, going to France actually to to Paris and and Rotterdam uh, and this is it's two sides of this African player story because uh, as they say for every African player that actually makes it in Europe because that's a dream to many um, there is probably thousands that doesn't and there are agents dirty agents behind promising you a bright future in Europe because every, everything, there is so much good money there. And then you find them on the streets of uh, Rotterdam or in Paris or in, in all the big cities in the continent in Europe. You find um, children living on the streets because they're not, they can't go home, they don't have money and, and they don't, their parents or family might think that they work as professional players abroad. So. So for every, uh, one, for every of those sunshine stories of Ronaldo or whoever, you find many uh, sad stories. And it's a big problem in, in football. Trafficking, actually. They, they call it trafficking. It's, um, we won't talk that much about that, but it's a, I think it's an important aspect to remember because um, we often are presented these sunshine stories. But that's the, the things they want us to see. <laughs> The rest is not that visible. But this documentary is very good. <laughs> so um, I won't have time to show that to you, but I would. Bashigu. Statement three. Sport brings communities together. Mm. Yeah, there are many examples, as you also mentioned in Brazil. There are many examples of uh, sport being used for community building. So on the other side, yeah, on the negative side of Tom, you got like uh, even though the intention is to bring people and communities together, you often can achieve the opposite effect. Though, like if people with ethnic background, gays and the disabled, are in many cases banned or frozen out by the normal people in the sport. An example is like the gay people in football who most often wait until their playing career is over because before they get out of the closet because they're afraid they'll be treated different because yeah. just because they like the same sex. And like Philip Lahm, who was the captain for both Germany and Bayern Munich, s said clearly that the uh, gays aren't welcome in his, his uh, dressing room. It's very sad and it's a huge yeah. problem. It's that good. Yeah, very good. Same with communities. When uh, The first thing popping down in my mind when it comes to the negative assets is like these um, um, conflicts between the Catholics and Protestants, for instance, in Ireland, where you have a relatively a big city but a small community, like, you know, on a global scale and then it's like huge clusters because of that so it's a good example of sport not being yeah. very bringing uh, communities together good statement four makes people aspire towards excellence yeah we just uh, made a couple of quick points uh, on the positive side you can say that people who aspire for excellence can uh, learn themselves self-discipline they can adapt those skills into other aspects of life, work, for example, um, career, etc. Uh, so there are many uh, obvious positive sides of, of people aspiring for excellence, of course. Uh, but if you look on the negative sides, you can say that uh, people feel pressure uh, when they do sports, pressure for performance, pressure for physical uh, uh, capacity, physical looks, etc. That can uh, that can uh, push people to, to use illegal substances such as gamble steroids, like so on the and the movie or or, uh, or other performance enhancing drugs. Uh, push them over the 
side, basically. Mm. So you can say that it has a positive and negative sides, of course, but also it's a positive. Yeah. It's the whole idea of, of sports and the movement is to be your level best or whatever, but yes. you always want to be better than everyone else. That's also the, the core of sport, is to beat people in, in the game, to be the best. So it's good. And it's very relevant, of course, what we, the film that we saw. Well, where, where's the limit between, for instance, he, he used the example of Tiger Woods. I thought that was a very good example. I didn't know that he had perfected his vision. But what's the difference when you, <laughs> it's kind of what you talked about, the financial doping kind of thing. It's, um, there's this gray area that is dif difficult to <coughs> know what you should mean, mean about. Good. Number five, sport helps people to socialize. Good. There's, um, there are studies showing this. Uh, of course, it depends on what is important for the, for instance, in a, in a class, in a group. And actually, in your group, any group, you probably had that about, about that in psychology. If it's important for the group as a whole, um, if sport is important or is a high status to be good at sport, then of course the group will, in that specific group, you will be a hero if you're good at sport and the other if you're not. <coughs> if, uh, math, if maths is what's important in the group or being good at school, then being a sports dude it's maybe not worth so much. So it's, um, it's those group, uh, what do you say? group uh, processes or um, identifications that are really central. Okay, good. Made you think a little bit, I hope. And the point being, as I said before, and I will say again, the whole idea is to, to we think in order to understand sports, we need to understand these different aspects of it. Not be critical just because we want to be critical, but because we enhance our understanding of a phenomenon if we know that it has different sides to it. Now we will have 15 minutes break and when we will come back we'll talk about globalization and the global sport industry.